uh, one of the two X chromosome in each cell is randomly inactive uh, while development is going on. The inactive X will condense into what we call bar bodies. Uh, if a female is heterozygous for a particular gene, for instance, located on the X chromosome, she will become mosaic for that character. Now, um, All right, so that's that. Um, all right, so in activation of the Hex chromosome involved modification of the DNA and proteins bound to it, which is called histone. I told you protein and histone protein and DNA is what makes the chromosome. A part of the chromosome contains several genes involved in the activation process. One of the genes that becomes active only on the chromosome that will be inactivated. Uh, the gene is called X inactive specific transcript. So it's this gene that actually inactivates the gene, the chromosome. Uh, the gene will be active to inactivate the chromosome. It's just like when you are talking about protogenes, all of that, on, uh, I mean, oncogenes rather, they are going to cause cancer cells. So even though they are doing bad thing, but they become active, right? So this gene is the gene that become active so that it can inactivate the system. All right. Um, so this is uh, X chromosome concept that we're talking about, a fixed cell, cell division and X chromosome inactivation. So inactive X, active X happens here. And so the, that becomes inactive there. Let's go, I just want to touch base on that. Now, so each chromosome has hundreds or thousands of genes, except for white chromosomes. Genes are located on, that are located on the same chromosome tend to be inherited together. So when those genes located on the same chromosome are inherited together, we call them linked genes. So genes on the same chromosomes, we call them linked genes, and they are likely to be inherited together. All right, so how does this affect inheritance? Morgan also decided to do an experiment to see how linkage is going to have impact on inheritance. Because now we are talking about two genes to be inherited together, right? Uh, like you are saying, somebody is, um, it has the shape of the nose and the, and the, um, and let's say, shape of the high and high color something like that that is two genes that you may see together and once you get this you have this once you have this you have that so that's the concept of linked genes it's the reason they are gotten together they are transmitted together is because they are linked together on the chromosome they are closely linked they are closely located on the chromosome so morgan did an experiment to see this it cross flies that differ that are different in traits of body colors and wing size. So the first cross was the P generation, parent generation, to so that they are going to give rise to the first generation, first filial generation. Now this is not monohybrid, this is dihybrid because we are looking at two traits. All right. The second was the test cross. Look at it. So he did this. So Y type is gray body, normal wings, gray body, normal wings. W mutant is black body, vestigial wings. So that's that here. Now it test crossed them. And at the end of the day, he got this F generation, the first filial generation. Um, the first filial generations are the guys here. So he has the Y type. Gray normal, the black type, the black vestigia, which is of course mutant. He got the gray vestigia, which is also a uh, mutant. Then he got the black normal, black mutant. Then yeah, so that was what he got in the two traits or two genes segregated together again they are linked genes because they are located on the same chromosome and then 
chances are that they will be transmitted together if they are together. So the resulting flies had a much higher than expected proportion of combination of tracing in the P generation flies. Parental phenotype. It concluded that these genes do not assort independently, meaning that they don't separate separately, they separate together. Like they go together from the parent to the offspring instead of separating. And reason that they were on the same chromosome because they were segregating together. They were assorting together. non parental phenotypes were also produced in the test cross, suggesting that these two traits could be separated sometimes, right? This involved genetic recombination. And I talked about this when I talked about um, meiosis. The production of offspring with combination of traits differing from either parents. All right? That is what we call genetic recombination. Now, genetic recombination and um, linkage, link genes. Genetic findings of Mendel and Morgan relate to the chromosomal basis of recombination. Um, now, offspring with a phenotype matching one of the parents are called parental types, right? Then, offspring with non parental phenotypes, which are new combinations, are called recombinant types. So, if you look at th this is a concept, if you come here now, okay, I will just use this. Now, here is recombinant. I mean, parental offspring, parental breed, or parental gene. So you see the parents have yellow and round dihybrid parents. So yellow and round. So if you look at this guy, it is yellow and round. Then these parents have green wrinkled or mosaicous recessive plants. Green wrinkled. So if you look at this, this is just like the parent as well. So these are parental. But if you come here, you're going to see yellow, of course. Yellow is part of the parent, but there's no yellow and uh, yellow and wrinkled in any of the parents. A parent is either yellow and round, which is here, but this child is yellow and wrinkled. So this is a recombinant. This child is green and wrinkled, which is different from what you have on the parent. Green and round, rather. So it's green and round. There's no parent that is green and round. There's only green and wrinkled. So these two are recombinant uh, offspring. Now, we've talked about crossing over, so I'm just going to... I mean, you remember crossing over happened during uh, meiosis 1, or prophase 1 of meiosis 1, right? When the homologous chromosome cross on each other, and then that leads to recombination. All right? So I will go from here. Those are videos. So recombinant recombinant chromosome bring alleles together in new combination of in gametes, which is what give rise to recombinant. That is not the same as the parents, right? So random fertilization is going to increase the likely chance of recombination to happen, and that will of course lead to genetic diversity uh, on the long run. Now genetic map tells you the list of all the genes on the chromosome. So don't forget, there's karyotype, which tells you the chromosome list of an individual. And we have 23 locations. We have 23 chromosomes in code, 23 pairs. In, in total, 46 chromosomes. That is called karyotype. I'll write it here. That one is called karyotype. So karyotype is simply a, a chart that tells you about someone's chromosome, karyotype. I'll, I'll call chart of chromosome. So if somebody have chromosomal abnormality, now let's say somebody, they are trying to see, does this person have Down syndrome or what is the problem? Klinefelter, Turner syndrome, Jacob syndrome. They want to see what the problem is. They are going to do a karyotype. A karyotype is going to tell the list of the chromosome in that sense. And see if there is an, is an abdominal number or there is an, a reduction. There is an increase in the number of chromosomes, 47 instead of 46, 45 instead of 46. The chromos karyotype is going to tell you that. But there is something that we call genetic map. Genetic map is not just uh, chromosome now, it's checking 
Now, don't forget the location of a gene on the chromosome is called loci, locus or loci. So, genetic map gives you, in, in a way, you can say the list of genes on a chromosome. But to be specific, it gives you the location of the genes. All right. So, karyotype tells you the location of the chromosome. Um, genetic map also tells you the location of the gene, which is genetic loci of a particular chromosome. All right. So, it tells you the genetic, or let me make it in a way, gene locations on a chromosome. That is actually, so if you want to check, oh, we already noticed that this problem is on chromosome 21. Then we want to check what are the genes on the chromosome 21. We do a genetic map to know the gene locations on chromosome 21 and see which gene location is where the problem is. All right, let's go. So a linkage map is a genetic map of a chromosome based on the recombination uh, frequencies. Distances between genes can be expressed as map units. One map unit express 1% recombination frequency. Map unit indicates relative distance and order, not precise location. So it's just like you're saying, you're estimating distance and we use map unit instead of like meter, right? So that's that. Genes that are far apart on the same chromosome have uh, lower chances of recombin recombining, which is 50% chances. Such genes are physically linked, but genetically they are unlinked because they are far apart. And they, are, they behave as if they are found on different chromosomes because they are not close anyway, so they are not going to be segregated together at any point. Um, let's go. Right, that's just okay. Cool. So non disjunction. Now, if you look at this word, this word usually could be confusing, but think about it. Non disjunction simply means I will pull this. All right. So when you look at the word non, non means let me say no. This also means no junction means together or let me use a better word joined so when you say the word disjoint it means to separate to disjoint it means separate when you now say no disjoint it means no separation does that make sense? So in quotes, non disjunction simply means no separation. Does that make sense to you? Please let me know in the chat. I, I need you to understand that word, the meaning of that word. Okay. I'm still expecting more responses. Cool. So non disjunction simply means something is not separating. All right, something that was joined did not disjoin, right? So it did not separate. So in non disjunction, pair of homologous chromosomes do not separate. You see that normally during meiosis. Now, if you remember during meiosis in anaphase one and anaphase two, that is where you expect separation to happen. So when separation does not happen normally the way it should happen, um, we call it non-disjunction. Now that non-disjunction is a problem because what is going to happen is that the chromosome does not separate to different poles the way they should be separated. So instead of having uh, a set on this side, having a chromosome on this side, you're going to have an extra on one side and zero on the other side. So it may end up happening that a, a cell may now end up, an individual may now end up having 45 instead of 46 and 47 instead of 46. So that is what we call non disjunction So as a result, one gamete received two of the same type of chromosome, you see that, and another received no copy. 
Let's go. So this is what happened in non-disjunction. You can see here. In non-disjunction, you see there's non-disjunction here in meiosis 2, meiosis 1 as well here. On the long run, what do you notice? This guy have three chromosomes instead of having um uh instead of having two in quotes, this guy have have three, this guy have one, have one. So there's an extra one here, there's an extra one here, there's reduction of one here, there's reduction of one here. If you come here as well, the same thing. All because there's non-disjunction. Now you see this guy have just if it happened, oh good, sorry. If it happened in meiosis one, it's going to affect everything. You see that? But happened in meiosis two, it's just going to affect two. So this guy have three, is three. This guy have just one. All right. So non disjunction of homologous chromosome in meiosis one will lead to death. Non disjunction of sister chromatids. You know we talk about sister chromatids in meiosis two because meiosis two and mitosis have the same terminology. All right. Let's go. So aneuploidy, aneuploidy. So normal ploidy simply means no a uh, set of chromosome that is ploidy. Aneuploidy means there's an abnormal set. So ploidy, I'll put that here. Ploidy is normal chromosome set. Normal chromosome set in an organism is ploidy. So if you look at our ploidy now, we are, we, so e.g. now in male, in human, you are going to see diploid. That is our ploid, ploid, diploid. Banana, you're going to see triploid. So I joke with people, if you want more chromosome hit banana, I'm just kidding. But banana have times three, triploid, whereas we have two. So banana have 69 chromosomes, usually. So that's ploidy. Ploidy simply means normal. But you know in biology, when A comes before an existing word, it's usually a problem, <laughs> right? So aneuploidy simply means there is abnormal set. It means there's abnormal chromosome set. That is aneuploid. So aneuploid is going to result from not disjunction. So result from fertilization of gametes in which non disjunction occurred, right? So think about it. If any of those gametes that have an extract set of chromosome fertilize an egg, then they're going to have more than normal. If the one that have lower, less number of chromosome fertilize an egg is going to be a problem. That is aneuploid. Now, ploidy, when we say ploidy, is not chromosome number, it's chromosome set. So it's like somebody having an extra 23, not just somebody having an extra chromosome. Now, there's something we call somi. Monosomic means some, uh, the chromosome is just it's one instead of having two. So instead of somebody to have two chromosomes, on the location, two chromosomes, the father and the mother chromosome, right? The father chromosome for this, then the mother chromosome, then the person may have one that is missing. So monosomy, when the, it should be disomy. Monosomy is when there is an extra that is missing, just extra chromosome. Aneuploidy is a set, a whole set of chromosome is affected. You see, I call it set. It's a whole set that is affected. That is aneuploidy. It's a whole set. This is a set. But SOMI is just one chromosome. Just one. So when you say there is trisomy 21, in case of Down syndrome, now for instance, trisomy 21, it simply means that on chromosome position 20, 21, there are three chromosomes there instead of two chromosomes. And if there is monosomy, that means instead of having one, two chromosome, there's just one, one chromosome. So that chromosome number will now be 45 instead of 46, right? Let's go. 
So polyploidy means there is multiple sets. It's a condition in which an organism has more than two complete sets. You see? Complete sets. Aneuploidy means abnormal sets. It's just saying the set is abnormal. Aneuploidy. But when you say polyploidy, it means more than normal, more, I mean more sets. All right? More than two complete sets of chromosomes. So somebody can be triploidy. If somebody is triploidy now, that's a problem because we are normally diploid. Except this happened in banana. If this happened in banana, that is fine. But if it happened in an individual, it's a problem. Imagine have if, if somebody, if a man contributes 46 chromosomes instead of 23 chromosomes, that's a problem. And if a woman contributes 46 chromosomes instead of 23 chromosomes, that's a problem. Because the individual will now have 40, 69 chromosomes. Tetraploidy is 4N, which is 4 set of chromosomes. Polyploidy is common in plants, but not in animals, of course. If it happens in animals, there will be... Uh, there will be... Uh, it will not... Be, bring i mean it's rare that you see such come to time right so polyploids are more normal in appearance than aneuploids all right let's go now chromosomal abnormality chromosomal abnormality now um alterations that happen with chromosome structures are very significant there is one that we call deletion deletion means a fragment of the chromosome is cut off, is deleted. Now, there is, so that's deletion. Now, duplication is when there is repeated test segment, segment. What deletion means is that some genes will be affected because the loci will be cut off, right? Du duplication means they will be repeated. So that means there will be double presentation of some genes. Inversion means that it's, more like it will invert instead of standing like upright it will change its orientation then translocation means that the chromosome is moved from one seg one segment is cut off and changed to another segment i'll show you all of that now this is deletion you see this is just removed so that means there will be no expression of those genes d is just removed that is deletion so here you see deletion here duplication you see this bc has become doubled bc bc this is duplication now inversion you see it should be a b c d now it changed to d c b d c b that is inversion translocation is this a and b now you notice what has happened this is A and B here, and this is MNO here. MNO suddenly moved here. Breakage led to translocation. Then AB moved to this location. So they translocated. Let's go. Now, Human disorder due to chromosome alteration of chromosome number and structures are associated with some serial disorder. Of course, some types of aneuploidy appear to upset the genetic balance less than others, resulting in individuals surviving to birth and beyond. These surviving individuals have a set of symptoms, syndrome, characteristics of, and types uh, of the types of aneuploidy. Let's go. Now, Down syndrome is a major one. Trisomy, it means there's an extra chromosome on number 21 alone not a set of chromosomes it's just one chromosome increase down sedum that's why it's called trisomy 21 so it, there's three copies of chromosome 21 that's all it affects one out of every 30 children born in the u.s it increases with the age of mother so that's why when they say high risk pregnancy usually the last data that i check is uh down syndrome is usually higher with 35 upward when the mother is 35 years upward uh that is is usually a bias chances so this is what we call down syndrome you see this here if you look at chromosome 21 where's chromosome position 21 this is 18 19 20 21 so there's trisomy 21 there's one extra chromosome one extra chromosome not extra set of chromosome 
in position 21. That's got try so me. Then an employee of chromosome, right? Now, non disjunction of sex chromosome produces of sex chromosome rather. Non disjunction of sex chromosome produces a variety of unemployed conditions. Now, clean effector is a condition that results from an extra male, extra chromosome in a male. So that instead of the male having XY, the male will have XXY. That is unemployed. All right, let's go to the next slide. Look at this. XSX female occur in frequency of about 1,000. They are both, sorry, excuse me. So they are healthy with no unusual physical features, but they are at risk of learning disability. Monosomy X, which we call Turner syndrome. In this case, it means there is 45 chromosome instead of 46. All right, it produces XO females, which are sterile. It's usually, it is only known viable monosomy in humans. Um, all right, I'll leave this. I'm trying to finish up before we finish. Okay, before time elapses. So I want to talk the things that are, all right, no. Jeremy Quinn printing, please just read that. That's before the, okay. So I'm going to, Stop there. Those are the things I need to touch here. So I'm going to stop right there.